In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here from the maths paper 1-2 from 2024 Cambridge A-Level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, have a look at the playlist that I've linked in the description below. If you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a search on my channel. I'll be doing all this on the whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to in the classroom. But remember, we're not in the classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, even watch it at double speed. If you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, a share, or even a super thanks. In question three, they give us two equations, as you can see here, and they ask us to show that this can be expressed like this. Basically show that they, they look the same, they are the same. Um, you're often given questions like this, and I always say, make one look like the other. It's often just one side of the equation look like the other. In this case, make this whole equation look like this whole one, or vice versa, you can pick. And I often say, pick the more complicated looking one. So I just wanna say in this case, a lot of students would pick this, it looks more complicated, there's, an X, there's a squared in it. Um, and I'm sure there's a clever way to turn this into this. I guess whatever we, I show you now in a minute, backwards. Um, but in this case, it's easier to go from here to here. And I think this is more complicated because it has a tangent and it has a cosine. This is all just signs. So I think this is a little simpler. Also, another hint here would be a uh, tangent can be broken apart quite easily. A uh, tangent is just, uh, as we'll see in a moment, sine divided by cosine. Um, so I think this, there's more to play around with this one. Um, and that's what I'll start with. But you might have to try a few different things. So if we take this one and start playing around with it, and I'll, I'll use what I just said, uh, seven, instead of tan, I'll use sine theta over cosine theta. That's all divided by uh, cosine theta plus 12 equals zero. Uh, be careful when you're doing, uh, a lot of students mess up with uh, fractions and dividing fractions. I find it often helps if the top row is a fraction, and just make a little fraction on the bottom row. And uh, that helps students just think about it. Especially a lot of students like to use the idea that when you divide by a fraction, you turn it upside down and multiply. So we'll, we'll do that theory here. Seven, we'll have sine theta here, and we'll multiply by this one. Doesn't change anything. And we'll have cosine, and we'll end up multiplying by the cosine. So it's just cosine uh, squared. Another way I like to think of this is uh, the cosine's dividing. And so is this cosine dividing. They're both on the dividing side of things. That's why we end up with two of them down there. It's another way maybe to think about it. Anyway, plus uh, 12 equals zero. Um, I would start moving things around because we have a zero. Zeros are very helpful. Um, it looks like we have three terms. We actually only have two. If we move this plus 12, it'll quickly turn into a minus 12. And we can start multiplying across now. We can get rid of this bottom row. We could have done it up here as well. Uh, but let's do it here. Seven uh, sine theta is equal to minus 12 multiplied by this guy. Cosine squared um, theta. Um, so what do you do next? There's a, we use one of the most famous things to do. Tangent goes into sine and cosine. Probably another one of the big, uh, most famous ones is uh, the idea that cosine, let's just write c, c squared plus sine squared is equal to one, this idea. And you can rearrange that, so instead of writing cosine squared, that's equal to one minus sine squared. So instead of this, and this is a very common thing, you'll do it, nearly guaranteed in an exam, you'll have to do this, minus 12, instead of a cosine, we'll end up putting one minus sine squared. Often a teacher or in a book, they just do this without telling you why and how, because that's how common it is. Um, and now, hopefully we're starting to see this. This is, uh, this is looking a lot like up here. Let's, uh, let's see, let's get everything, let's get this, all the sine squares out. That'd be minus 12 multiplied by minus sine squared. So that'd be uh, 12 sine uh, squared theta. Um, all the signs, and yeah, let's get it all on the same side. There's no sign here, there's a sign here. Move it over, we get minus seven sine theta. And all the numbers, that's minus 12 times one, that's uh, a minus 12. And uh, that's leave zero over this side, or right this side, just to make it look the same. 
And uh, yeah, that's answered part A. That's made that look like that. Two tricks there. Turn tangent into sine over cosine. And turn cosine squared into 1 minus sine squared. In part B, we're simply asked to solve uh, this equation. Now, hopefully you're thinking, because um, it's a very common thing for them to do. Well, let's not answer this one. Let's answer this one. It's, it's meant to be the same. This is a hard equation to answer. This hopefully turns out to be easier, and it does. Um, this is just a quadratic. It's, uh, if, you, if you want to replace, like, lots of students uh, hate using this. So if you want, you could just write this as 12x squared minus 7x minus 12 equals zero. Just remember later to change x and sine uh, theta back. But I, I won't do that, I don't want to confuse anyone here. Um, to solve this, there's a couple of choices. Uh, you can just factorize it. It's not all that easy though, I wouldn't say, because 12, there's lots of factors to 12, and there's lots of factors to 12. Um, it would take you a few minutes just testing through them all. Um, the other options obviously are the minus B formula. Remember A is 12, B is minus seven, and C is uh, minus 12. Or of course you can complete the square is the other option. We will factorize uh, because I spent a few minutes doing it. Um, so it turns out it's four sine and three sine works out for it. And then you can just try the, all the factors of 12. Uh, one and 12 won't work. But there's a little trick here. If you were going through all the factors of sine, you would have tried uh, one times 12 um, and you would have found, oh, that doesn't work for any of these factors. Uh, so you've actually tried all the 12s versus the 12s. So you know uh, 1 and 12 doesn't work here either, or 2 and 6 doesn't work here either. So you should have found that only 3 and, three and 4 work. Just try where are they, uh, is the 3 here um, tr and 4 here, that would be 12 and 12. No, you can't get 7 there. So it's uh, 3 here and 4 here. Um, we'd end up with, uh, let's see, we'd end up with 16 and nine. 16 and nine does combine to get a seven. So what do we need? We need the biggest, bigger number to be a minus. So that'd be the 16, four by four. Uh, so minus would appear over here and a plus here. And that's how we saw These each equal zero. So that means that sine theta must equal minus three over four or sine theta equals four over three. You'll lose a mark. For, for not uh, discounting this one. You don't have to put a line through it, I guess. You just have to not use it. Uh, but it's best to put a line through here. Tell them you're not using this. And why? Well, four over three is bigger than one. Sine can never be bigger than one or less than minus one. So that's not a real answer. Uh, here's your answer here. Uh, sine theta equals that. Uh, do you want to find theta? Let's draw a picture. Let's draw our sine. Uh, let's see, it starts here. They want between 0 and 360. I'll, I'll continue it on though, because if I put this into my calculator, or let's write this, theta equals the inverse sine of minus 3 over 4. If I put this into my calculator, well actually first let's say uh, sine theta equals minus 3 over 4. That's down about here, minus 3 over 4. So there's all the answers. There's an answer there, an answer there, more. There's millions of answers. These are the two we're looking for, between 0 and 360. But my calculator, if I put this in, um, it gives me, let me write it down, it, my calculator would tell me it, the answer is minus 48.6. And so many students just believe that as an answer. Um, that's this answer here. The calculator's not wrong. The calculator's right. This is a correct answer to this one. Um, it's just not the ones we're interested in between 0 and 360. So you have to use your brain a little. Uh, calculator told you this one. You need to find these two. Uh, the, a, a secret here is it's all symmetrical. So if that's a, what was this number? 49, let's call it. If this is 49 away from, from this bit, this must be 49 away from this bit. So 360 minus 49 will give me the answer 311.4. That's an answer. Um, this guy here, it's also symmetrical around this point. So if it's 49 away from there, it must be 49 away from here. And that's 180 plus 49 uh, is 228.6. Uh, oh, sorry, I'd lose a mark.
Boom, need to put a line through that. <laughs> That's not one of the answers. These are the two answers. Again, there's millions of answers over here and none of them are right either uh, because they told us the answer was between zero and 360. So these are the only two answers. Okay, uh, hopefully that helped. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, have a great day.